the end of the Roman Empire. We will cover internal problems, external threats, and the views of Edward Gibbon in hindsight. Your objectives. What effect did the Roman farmers' fear of raids have on the empire? And why did the Goths move into the Roman Empire? To what city did Constantine move Rome's capital in 330 AD? And who was Attila the Hun? Name two of Justinian's major accomplishments. And name two ways that the Byzantine Empire was different from the Western Roman Empire. All right, Diocletian was the emperor that split the Roman Empire in two. The Byzantine Empire was the eastern part of the empire after the Roman Empire split. Attila the Hun was a Mongol warrior that invaded Europe. Corruption is the decay of people's values. And Justinian was an emperor that passed a code of laws and tried to reunite the empire. The empire collapsed by internal and external problems. We're going to look at the internal problems first. The internal problem number one was there was no rule of secession. This meant the Romans had never developed rules governing who would become emperor next. Assassination became common and an emperor at one time was lucky to last five years. Since any powerful man could become emperor, the empire fought amongst themselves too often. Civil wars weakened the empire. The Romans depended on slaves to get things done. When people do their own work, they often find easier ways to get the job done. Since the empire could depend on the work of slaves, they didn't need to invent new ways. We wealthy Romans bought up the land from poor farmers. Poor farmers, like us, had to move to the cities. We don't need them to work for us. We've got slaves. Without jobs, the government gave us the dole. Now, the dole was kind of like a welfare program. As a senator, I had to keep increasing the dole to get elected. But with so many people not working, how does the empire keep functioning? Hey, Senator, we need more slaves. Why doesn't the army go conquer some more territories? How about it, poor guys? Want to join the army? Why should we? We got the dole. Now I've got to hire foreigners to fight our wars. Sounds like more taxes. How else is he going to pay those foreigners? Hey, we want an increase to the dole. Problem number three, management and division. In some ways, the Roman Empire had just become too large to manage. Emperor Diocletian, therefore, split the Roman Empire in two. Problem four was decadence. The Rome, rich Romans became immoral and they began to live for pleasure. The Romans' love of violence increased. Slaves were tortured for entertainment at dinners. These unstable elements inside the empire left the empire too weak to deal with the external problems. And the number one external problem was German aggression. In AD 9, a German leader named Arminius attacked a pompous Roman named Varus. Varus thought he could tame the Germans as Julius Caesar had done to the Celts. Arminius had been a Roman soldier and used the training he had received against the Romans in the Battle of the Tudberg Forest. In 9 AD, Arminius lured the Romans into a narrow area between a forested hill and a bog. Then the Germans charged out of the wooded hill and attacked the Romans. The Roman legions were destroyed by the German armies. The Romans were stunned. They had thought the legions were invincible. This marked the first time that the Roman Empire retreated from territory it had conquered and could not recapture it. 
Goths and other Germans continued to invade from the north. Roman farmers who lived near the borders were raided. These farmers began moving toward the empire's interior. This shrank the size of the Roman Empire. Their farms were often taken over by the Germans. In 410, the Germans made it all the way to Rome. Then they sacked Rome. This means they murdered the men, looted the goods, and did what they want with the women. The problem number two was one reason the Goths invaded Rome was that they had the Huns behind them. The Huns, Attila the Huns, led his Mongols across Asia and into Europe between 434 and 453. During his reign, Attila the Hun was one of the most feared enemies of the Western and Eastern Roman empires. He crossed the Danube twice and plundered the Balkans, but he was unable to take Constantinople. He also attempted to conquer Roman Gaul, modern France, crossing the Rhine in 451 and marching as far as Orleans before being defeated at the Battle of the Catalonian Plains. Then he de devastated Italy's northern provinces, but he was unable to take Rome. He planned for further campaigns against the Romans, but he died in 453. After Attila's death, the Germans revolted against Hunnic rule and the Hunnic Empire quickly collapsed. Although it was clear that the barbarians overthrew Rome, not everyone agrees to why they were able to do it. One of the greatest historians of the Roman Empire was Edward Gibbon. According to Gibbon, the Roman Empire fell under barbarian invasions because its citizens lost their sense of duty. Gibbon cites several reasons why he thought the Roman Empire collapsed. They hired foreigners to do what they should have done themselves. Because Romans became soft and unwilling to live the tough life, they allowed foreigners to come into their empire. They hired barbarians to be their soldiers and captured slaves to do farm work. They had wasteful spending, high taxes, and inflated their money. The Romans didn't seem to care about how much it cost to fund things in the empire that they wanted. They just kept on spending. The gap between the wealthy and the poor grew wider and wider. Politicians became corrupt. And Roman culture was also weakened when the population became Christian. Christianity told people that they were equal in a system that relied on slavery. And Christians were often too peaceful to operate in a system that ran on warfare. 